Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Behind me in the weeds here is the basis for one of the coolest cooking implements I've found in a long time. It's called the discata. So there's nothing new about a discata. Uh, it's primarily used in northern Mexico and what they do is they'll take a disc off a plow from a tractor, flip it upside down, weld the bottom up, and cook in it similar to a wok. So you can see this dome shape. Now these discs are a usable wearable item. So this is something that, uh, you know, not that uncommon for a farmer to have, you know, an old disc sitting around. Uh, the hole in here kind of gets oblonged at times or squared out and they just don't roll right anymore. So the disc behind me uh, measures around 16 inches. Now this is uh, pulled behind an eight end is what I was using this one for. So this is real common for smaller gardens and stuff. When you get into the bigger fields, the disc get bigger. So rather than make a small discata, I decided to go big and get the biggest one I could find. So what I was able to find was a 22 inch disc. This is the biggest one I could find. And you see the nice walk shape that it's got to it already. Uh, I bought this from a, a farm implement store just up the road. A lot of old farms are gonna have equipment like this laying around. And this disc is ancient. You know, these things sit out in the field forever. Um, they're super durable, and this is going to make a multi-generational cooking implement. So when I got this, there was a one-inch hole in the center. You can see how these are mounted all in a row off a spindle, and that lets it rotate through and cut the dirt similar to a pizza cutter. So I did the hard work already. Uh, I made a one-inch plug, welded all it up, front and back, and put two handles on it. This didn't really take that long to weld. I spent more time grinding it down and getting a nice smooth surface on the inside that I did welding it. Um, a welding shop can take care of this. It shouldn't be that much and it's definitely going to be worth it when you see the results. Now covered in this disc is going to be a heavy, heavy coat of rust. Uh, it's still solid metal under here. These things are designed to have hard lives and to sit out in the fields. Now when I was grinding on this, I did notice a little bit of red paint, which that could mean it's a farm all originally. Uh, it could have been a case, you know, I don't really know. Uh, doesn't matter who makes it. Uh, you looking for old and vintage and heavy with this kind of thing. So the next step is going to be to strip off all the rust. All right, so the first tool I'm going to use to go after this rust is going to be an angle grinder. Now, when I hit it with the actual grind wheel, that was taking off way too much metal. You know, that let me grind down the welds that I did to give me a nice smooth interior. This is uh, really heavy. This is like a 40 grit sandpaper. So I'm going to hit it with this paper flapper wheel on an angle grinder and it's going to knock off most of the heavy rust. Now you don't want to be breathing this stuff. You know I'm outside an open field, no big deal. If you're hitting this you know in a garage or in some type of area where you're enclosed, you know a respirator would probably be a good idea. So most of the heavy rust is gone now. I've just got this little patch here and I just wanted to show you what we're trying to do here. That 40 grit paper is not really removing much metal. All I'm doing is taking the heavy flake off. When I rub my hand over this, it's smooth. When I get to this part here, I mean this is pretty, pretty coarse rust right here. So it's all done just with this little spot and it comes off pretty quick. All right, so you can see what that 40 grit did. You know, it took all the heavy rust off. I've still got quite a bit of pitting and things in here, but nothing real deep. So it would probably be a good idea to go through the progression of paper, maybe to 120, maybe uh, 240 grit paper. You know, you're gonna get a better product if you do that. I don't have it, I don't really care. What I've got here is like a paint and rust stripper. So with this tool, I could not find it as a grinder option, so I had to chuck it up in a drill bit.
All right, so that stripper, you know, did a really nice job. You know, hopefully you can see how well that polished up. You know, it's not a shiny polish. You spend more time on it, you're gonna get better results. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit the stripper against the exterior of it again, give it a nice polish on the outside, and then we're gonna throw it in the fire and we're gonna burn the contaminants and the rust out of the steel. So the stripper worked out real well. I got all the rust off the interior of it and the exterior. You know, the next step is just gonna to be to burn out all the impurities. Now, this is strictly by blind luck, but this 22 inch disc with the handles that I welded on it fit just perfectly inside my Weber grill. Uh, originally when I designed or went with this design and this size, I wanted to get one big enough, you know, for big group campouts. Uh, for a deer camp, you know, cooking over an open fire was my main concern. The fact that I can just do backyard cooking with this in a normal grill, I mean, that's going to be able to use it a ton more now. Uh, before I discovered that it fit in my Weber, uh, I was going to use a turkey fryer or something similar to that. I mean, you can see this, this walk shape to it, you know, would sit right in a turkey fryer. And just like the grill, it's going to give you zones of heat. You know, the center is going to be super hot. As things cook to keep them warm, you slide them up out of the way. It's going to be a great system. All right, I got a little wood fire going here in the Weber grill, and I'm just going to throw it in. Uh, it's going to be dome side down, and we're going to start cooking some of the impurities out. So this thing's going to smoke like a fiend until, you know, most of the, the bad stuff's off. I'll pull it, flip it, scrape it off with either like a wire brush or maybe some aluminum foil, and I'll do the same to the outside. So you can see how this darkened up real well. Uh, this side's done. I can tell that because when I hit it with the wire brush, it just glides right across. As I was cooking out the impurities in the steel, uh, I, I could feel the brush dragging through them. So now most of that's burned out. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the backside real quick. The backside shouldn't take as long. And then we're gonna go ahead and try to season this up with some lard. So the rust and all the uh, foreign matter has been all burned off the discata. Now I'm just gonna give it a real quick coating of lard. When I first saw this, I just couldn't believe what a great idea this was, and it turned out great. Uh, this is also called a cowboy walk, so when you look up some of the recipes, you know, discata, cowboy walk, a lot of it's interchangeable. This, I just can't say enough about this, you need to get one of these. I don't care what situation you are, if you're just a deer camp kind of camper trying to feed a large group of uh, hunters at once, you know, this is the perfect tool for that. You know, if you're a backyard griller, you know, how cool are you if everybody's sitting around with their Yeti coolers and all their uh, cool guy stuff and you pull out a plow and start cooking on it. You are the king. This is like a double punch on your man card when you cook cool food over a fire on a tractor implement. So obviously this is a heavy uh, cooking implement. This is not something you're going to be backpacking with. Uh, however, this is something you would carry into a long-term camp and it would stay there. Uh, you would just grease it up to keep it from rusting. Uh, you would not use soap and water on this at all. You would just heat up regular water and, uh, you know, maybe scrub it out with either a wire brush, you know, aluminum foil. You could probably cut a stick and just chisel it out that way. But uh, this is something that you have to see to believe. This is so cool. You need to get one yourself. This has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.